welcome to Sunshine for Your Life. President John Kennedy once said, the cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. We in this country can celebrate our freedoms, not just our independence from England, but our freedoms in general. When I look at the scriptures, I find many men and women who were faithful to God, willing to stand up for their faith in their God and their nation. In the Old Testament, there were many patriots faithful to God. And right now, I am thinking of David, who was a friend of God and a patriot in the Old Testament. Now, David was a true patriot. He could not stand the thought of the Philistines, who were Israel's enemy, to fight against Israel. It was the same as fighting against God, as far as David was concerned. David was a young shepherd boy who was anointed by Samuel to be king. David visited the Israeli army, which was at war with the Philistines, and Goliath was the champion of the Philistines. The Israeli soldiers were afraid of him. Goliath was a giant who who was terrorizing Israel. David asked Saul's permission to fight Goliath, and Saul, of course, at that time was king. David uh, refused Saul's armor, and he used a slingshot to kill Goliath. David wanted his victory to show that God is the true God and will deliver his people. David fought with what he was familiar with, which was a slingshot, but it had to be accurate. There was no room for error. The confrontation must have been quite a sight to see. Goliath was about 10 feet tall. He wore armor weighing about 150 pounds, and the head of his spear weighed about 20 pounds. Goliath uh, taunted Israel Israel, that they sent a boy to do a man's job. And that was really true because David was a teenager, a shepherd boy, and Goliath was very, very tall, very heavy, very intimidating. So if you look at this picture, Goliath, a giant, 10 feet tall with armor weighing 150 pounds or more, faced a little boy with a slingshot. But David was not afraid, as I said before. Now, the first scripture that I'm going to read off is 2 Chronicles. 20 verse 15 and this is what it says be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's I'm going to read that again be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's David's fight was God's fight. Your fight is also God's fight, no matter what it is, whether you're fighting drugs or alcohol or finances or violence, whatever it is, or health problems, no matter what you are dealing with, God is in it with you. Now, I need to talk to you about the slingshot that David used. The slingshot was a weapon of warfare in the Old Testament times. It had a range of about 600 feet, and the sling stones could weigh as much as two pounds, and they could measure four inches in diameter, and they could travel about 100 miles an hour. It's hard to envision that, but that is true. And David already knew how to use a slingshot. He used it to protect his sheep as a shepherd. And God will help to use the abilities that you have for you to do his work. Whatever you have been gifted with, God is going to help you to use it. David knew where to aim that slingshot. And, and he probably uh, threw the stone at about the temple area because the rest of Saul's body was covered with armor. Now, why would God choose David to be his soldier? Because it, it, he was both brave and faithful. Now, this is a scripture I'm going to read, but it's not going to be on the screen. And it is 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 and 46. And this is what it says. David said to the Philistines, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down. So you see, he's confronting Goliath. He's confronting the Philistines and saying, you think you're going to get away with this, but because you're so much stronger than I am. But it's not going to happen. 
happen because I'm going to win this thing and I'm winning it not only for the nation of Israel but I'm winning it for God as well. David knew what the Israelis had to learn that you don't depend upon earthly weapons. The result of your work depends upon God and he is the one that gives the victory. Psalm 138.8 says this and this will be on the screen as the second scripture up. It'll be Psalm 138, verse 8, and this is what it says. Lord, you will do everything you have planned for me. I'll read it again. Lord, you will do everything you have planned for me. Now, there are a couple of other versions of it. I'm not going to put them on the screen, but of the same verse. The NIV says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. And the King James Version says, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. But it all means the same thing. The various translations usually mean the same thing, but they're phrased in a little different matter. And what it really means is that God has something he wants to do with me and for me, and he's going to do it. Whatever his plans are, he's going to bring them to fulfillment. Even in my own life, he will bring them to fulfillment. So what does that all mean for us? God will lead you every step of the way of where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. And if things don't work out the way that you want it to work out, that's all right because God is still leading you all the way. He hasn't left you. David faced a giant. And sometimes we face giants in our own lives, whatever our problems are. They seem like giant problems to us. Remember, you cannot lose as long as you are faithful to God. God is going to give you the victory, and if it doesn't turn out exactly as you expect, a victory would turn out. It's still going to be a victory for God in the long run. David used the gifts that he had, and the same is true of you. You should always use the gifts that you have. He's given you the gifts that you can use, and he wants you to use them for him. God is not going to waste any experience or knowledge that you have. God has prepared David. It did prepare David for his role in history, and God is preparing you for your role in terms of your own life and in terms of history as well. He has something special for you, and you don't want to miss it. Remember Romans 8.28. This is the third scripture on the screen, and this is what it says, Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And I'm going to read that again. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, Jesus says that he is coming back again. And it also says that the time will come when no man can work. So it's important that we do what he wants us to do in the time that we have left. And none of us know how much longer that we have left to live or what history is going to do to change things, to make things harder than they already are. Sadly, as a nation, we seem to be falling away from God. And that has given us an increase in violence, anger, hatred, and very things that are happening that are very difficult, addiction. So we can get back on track, however, because the Bible has made this uh, promise to us, and this is not going to be on the screen, but I am reading 2 Chronicles 7.14, and this is what it says. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and speak, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. So I'm going to read that again. As I said before, it won't be on the screen. 2 Chronicles 7:14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. So there is hope for us, but we as Christians have to be the ones on the front lines to make sure that our lives are right and that we're following God's will for our lives so that he will be able to do what he's promised to do. We turn away from what we are doing that's wrong. He will come and heal our land. That is a promise of God. So I'm going to close it here. We'll be doing something else next time. Please join me then.